Conan! Hi, Mitch. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? Look at your little cheekies. You're back. Oh, stop it. No, I'm I'm good. You know, I, it's, um, I, I really, it's strange not being in a hot, like, back room with you, you know? I know. The weird thing is, I'm still sweating. I... I'm in an air conditioned house. Yeah, me too. Still perfect. I haven't stopped sweating just since. from like nerves and just like tension, really. Yeah. That's it. Ever yeah. since that day, you, we, <laughs> our genetics changed. Like in a Marvel movie, yeah. when someone goes through like a radiation bath and then they become yeah, like a one superhero. of our sweat beads like combined. Yeah. And like I've just been acting a little bit more like you. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah I've been crying and anxiously walking around the house. Like, everyone's like, "Why are you doing that?" I'm like, I can't, "Mom, just stop, stop." It's just- you wouldn't understand. <laughs> you're, you're walking everywhere talking like an obnoxious radio announcer. You're like, hi, everybody. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Conan's been acting weird it's since really, Australia. <laughs> that's so funny. Like, what's that? Um, oh, my God. Lindsay Lohan movie, uh, Freaky Friday. You know when they swap Freaky bodies? Freaky Friday. That's what happened. I'd, I'd love to live a day in your body. I think it'd be a fun time. It's, it's yeah, it's a wrecked body. I've really put it through a bit, but uh, my Have life. You? My, well, not really. I mean, twenty five years. I've done some shit. Your body, would be like. I feel. I would feel so clean being in your body. It'd be like having a facial and doing like a, like a, a body. Oh, juice I've detox. tricked you. I am a dirty, <laughs> grimy boy. <laughs> well, it'd be fun. Yeah. It's great to have part of you and part of me with you. There's a there's a soul bond forever. So it's great to have you back. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, I'm a big I fan. Man, I, I love you, as you know. Thank you. And uh, God, Thank it's been you. it's been a hot minute since we've had stuff from you. But Overdrive is here, and it's exactly what I wanted. Actually, I don't want to say that it's not exactly what I wanted. It's more. It's exceeded expectations. Oh, it's, shoot! It's brilliant. Thanks, dude. It's so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it, yeah, it has been a while, um, but but I feel like it's been a long year, a very miserable year, yeah. and I just wanted to release something fun for sure. Have you been feeling like cooped up at home, or just going a bit crazy? Is is that like is this music a product of that? Being like, geez, what am I going to do other than make music? Yes, absolutely. This this music is a product of like wanting to escape, and the song itself is like this song about like being reckless and like meeting a stranger and like getting in a car and driving to another country. Like you know, it's very like it's very it's a fantasy. And yeah. I, don't, I, mean, I, I mean, you've met me. I'm actually a very shy person. I do not. I do not like, you know, I don't, I don't talk to strangers, but I know. So it, the, the song itself is definitely, you know, it's a fantasy. It's, it's yes. just a bit of um, a, day, a daydream, really. It's, it's escapism. I like that you own that, though. You listen to some artist's music and they're like, I met, like, even Shawn Mendes, like, I want to fly to Japan tonight. I'm like, Shawn Mendes, <laughs> your schedule will not allow you to fly to Japan tonight. <laughs> so don't sing about it unless you mean it, you know? I believe I believe it coming from. I think he'd fly to Japan for you, Mitch. I think he you would. You think you would? Oh, what's well, just Sydney, yeah, Sean? You've got the would. destination wrong, but I'll send you my address. You can, <laughs> it's a it's a easy easy flight. Uh, but I'm glad you're open about that. And on, have you ever have you had that one night thing like that? That's I I couldn't do that. I'm way too like highly strong. What do you think, Mitch? What do you think? Look at me. Do you think I've ever in my entire life ever talked to a stranger at a one night flight? Excuse me, Mr. Puka Shell Necklace. I think yes. I think yes. I would answer the message if no. I got a message from you in the Puka Shell. I have not. Um, no, I, I really like, I'm a very tame person. I, I think my fans know that about me. I'm very like shy and very yeah. reserved. People like always are like, oh, he's like, he was kind of like weird and like standoff. He's like, I wasn't being standoffish. I just have social anxiety. Yeah. It's not that deep. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I no, I haven't. Um, I would say the most like reckless thing me and my friends used to do in high school. I didn't realize it was reckless at the time, but yeah. we used to like break into construction sites. Um, like, you know, they'd always be like building new buildings in my hometown. Yeah. And so we'd always like break in and like, like, I don't know, eat fast food, like on one of the buildings, like, right. I don't know, from the roof or fun. something. It was fun, but very, very illegal. Like, yeah. don't do that. And but it was dangerous. Fun. Yeah. Okay. So the next song dangerous. could be about that. Like, you know. Yes. Hard hat yes, on our about- head. Coffee in yeah, our hands. Yeah, it's, about, it's called construction. No, it's called reconstruction. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's also a metaphor about you rebuilding your life after COVID. Yeah, yeah. it's deeper. It's, it's deeper it's than deeper, that. Yeah. yeah, than just the work site. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the, the song, it, what it, wherever it comes from, it's beautiful. And, like, I feel like you're gunning for that, for those charts, because it, it's a a, ra- a song that sounds so good on radio, and it feels Thank like it's, it's almost built for radio play. I mean, the song's about driving a car and, you know, uh, 
or be, being in a car. And I'm like, oh, it's all like tying into the radio fantasy. Uh, is, <laughs> do you think about making music for radio when you write stuff? Or no, you just sort of bleed out on the paper and then you write it and you perform it and you get it out. I, I think I don't, I don't really, I try not to think yeah. too much about kind of like what the purpose of the song is going to be because – I think that that's kind of when you start making like really crap music when you're like trying to like, Oh, I want to like, I want to do this for this reason. It's like, no, it's like, just like talk about your emotions, talk about something that you are feeling. And yeah. um, when I wrote overdrive, I really was just like feeling very like cooped up and very bored in my life and all that. And I just wanted something that was going to make me feel a little rebellious, make me feel like I could kind of escape from reality a bit. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I try not to, I try not to think about it because I think it, it messes me up. I'm already an insecure person. I don't need those expectations <laughs> as well. <laughs> I agree. I, um, I yeah. love the parallels of overdrive to driver's license. Like there must be a driving trend now, like overdrive driver's license. You've got the lyrics about the red light. I'm like, what's going on here? What this is like, yeah. we're in a universe about driving songs. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I mean, my favorite activity in COVID has been driving around. I don't know if you've, no. I've just really been, I just get in the car and just drive to nowhere because there's literally nothing else to do. So yeah. um, I'll be like, oh, time to go buy one singular apple from the store. <laughs> Got to get in my car. You know, like it's. Yeah. It's, uh, I know what you mean. Yeah, I have a track. Yeah. Sometimes I have like a, a I'll, I'll be like coming home from work at midnight after the radio show and I'll be listening to a podcast or a song and it won't be done yet. And I'll be like, well, I've got to, I've just got to keep driving, don't I, until it's finished. So then sometimes it's yes, like I 20 minutes. <laughs> I just drive, like <laughs> waste so much gas, but I, I enjoy it. Exactly. It's re relaxing yeah, for me. It's good for the soul, it not is. good for the environment. No. <laughs> but, but it's good for the but soul. But we're relaxed and we're calm. That's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah. so does this sit in another body of work that we might be getting soon, or is this going to be in a little little package bundle? What's going on with with the future plan for Conan Gray? Um, I mean, I'll be completely honest. I I genuinely don't know. Okay. Um, I, I've you know I've spent the past year kind of like writing a lot. I write a lot of music. I write basically like a song every day. It's fun for me. It's kind of like how I live my life, but. Um, I haven't really thought of it in, in terms of, of something bigger and I'm kind of just like letting it happen. Um, I think right now I mostly just wanted to release something just to um, let everyone know that I'm just like, you know, I'm just vibing. I'm here, you know? Yeah. And um, I'm definitely going to release a bunch of music in the in the next year but um i don't want to like set anyone's expectations too high right now <laughs> yeah yeah do you think that overdrive sits in the same world as heather and and maniac or no do you think they're two different bodies of work like do they represent two different conans that's a good question i mean i i think that just kind of timeline wise you know i wrote heather when i was 20 um and now i'm 22 so i think a lot has changed um since then and and it changes weird because you know you don't really realize it as it's happening but i like look back at a photo of myself when i'm 20 i'm like who is that person and yeah. who let him be the way he was in a sweaty room um, with a 24 year old man yeah that's, that should have been illegal. who would ever do that yeah that's Ridiculous. criminal oh, God, no oh my gosh Ugh. disgusting Gross. no um <laughs> But, but I think, I think, um, I think a lot has changed and, and, um, I think just innately the person writing that song was a very different person, but I think any song that is, that comes out of my mouth kind of just sounds like a Conan song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually, that's a, that's a good point that you bring up because I feel like, you know, as a relatively newish artist making music that's getting out there, you have really created a Conan sound for yourself, which is Thank you. some artists still struggle with that that have been around for years. And is that something that you think you found straight away or you knew what you wanted to get into your music? Like you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this sort of Conan angsty, vibey, moody, kind of hot, kind of <laughs> sexy, kind of sad. Like you've got all, it's good, you've got a lot of emotions sort of mashed into the oh. your songs you make. Thank you. No, I, I think to me, it's just um, writing music is really like writing in my diary to me. Yeah. Uh, I, before anyone was listening to my music, when nobody on earth cared, I've, I'd always kind of been writing the way I'd been writing. Um, I definitely like have influences and there's artists that I look up to so much that I think I've learned a lot from. But I think when I write a song that's about my own experience, it just kind of, has to be the way that I speak. And I think that my songs are very much, you can kind of hear the, the way that I talk in, in all of my, my songs. And so um, I think just the fact that since I write them by myself, that they kind of just sound the same or yeah. they sound like, like me. 
Yeah. Look at you go. I'm so proud of you. It's, I'm, I honestly am listening to your stuff and hearing you on the air and having other radio stations. Like I'll be in an Uber and they'll be like, Conan Gray, like you're a name that's now thrown around as like a, as like an, they'll be like, there's J-Lo. Oh, coming up, J-Lo. Coming up, Miley and Conan Gray. I'm like, the fact that there's no context needed for your name, you know what I mean? Oh no one has to be like 22 oh year old for the US, you release maniac. Like you, you, you're contextless. All we need is the name. Oh God. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> You're like, stop. Thank you very much. Stop. Look, it's true. Well, I haven't spoken very, to you in so yeah. long. I'm like, I got to get all the compliments out. I, I really do. Um, but I'm happy. I I, I'm, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy you're good. Are you in a good space? Like, uh, I see a lot of photos and it's, it's you crying on your Insta story. I'm like, oh, my God. But he, you're like, happy tears. I'm like, Con, don't do that. Don't do that to me. <laughs> I like to keep you on your toes, Mitch. It works. No, I'm actually, I'm doing pretty, I'm doing pretty well. And, and I would say definitely doing better than I was in the middle of 2020. I, can, I feel yeah. like we can all see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm feeling a lot better and um, I'm ready to, you know, get vaccinated and spit on my friends and, yeah. you know, yeah. breathe a bunch of dirty air. Yeah. I'm so ready for it. Be able I'm to ready. sweat on each other again. That I can't believe we were sweating on each other. Yeah. And th- that was a world before COVID. We thought that was fine. And that was right before COVID yeah. happened. Maybe like, you know, like I think maybe we had a part in <laughs> spreading a little COVID. I think it was <laughs> our mistake. We should have never being together hot room that was your dress you invited me into your dressing room i thought we were going to get some grand bellagio you accepted it true so 50 50 blame that's on you (laughs) we're we're never going to live this down to in 30 years we'll be interviewing each other and and we'll be talking you'll be like remember the room and the sweat (laughs) the audience will be like we've heard this story a thousand times we won't have to remember it because we're going to do all of our future interviews in a sweaty sweaty room we won't it'll be our reality there's nothing to remember very true um well buddy i love you i love overdrive update have you been on conan o'brien yet that's just i need to check every interview I haven't yet. I'm really kind of confused and upset. Same. I feel like maybe he has something against me. Mm. Like I'm just personal. waiting. Yep. Hashtag Conan on Conan. <laughs> I've tried to get it viral, Conan but my following is too small and uh, no one has seen it. But every time I interview him, like, <laughs> hashtag Conan on Conan. Let's get it. Try tag Conan. I tag his personal assistant. <laughs> no one sees it. But the day I you were there. I cannot wait. So, yeah, the day that happens. You will have to be there. Yeah. Give a knowing wink to a camera and then I'll just go, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Everyone's <laughs> like, he's doing it for us. And I'll d- deep down, I'll know he's doing I'll it for me. I'll sneak the yeah. word Mitch into the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, did he just call Conan a bitch? And you're like, no, no, it's an in joke <laughs> with a radio announcer in Australia. That's too bad. Too complicated. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, good to chat. Um, Overdrive is amazing. We're playing it as much as we can. And uh, when we can get you down here, hopefully soon, um, uh, we'll get back to that dressing room. We'll make it all happen. We'll relive it. Please. Thank you so much. I hope you are very, very well. Stay safe.